The people that are like, yeah, I'm going to take this week off. What the market's going to do is, yeah, sorry. That's someone that's got the right mindset. If they're already consistent in terms of what they can see and forecast and price action, and they can take themselves away from the market, even when they know there's something coming. That's maturity. That is a, a skill set that if you can forge that before you press into real money, that factor of, well, discipline, it will serve you so well. But you all think it's just the stuff in the chart that's what you need. The new ICT gimmick, the new something set up or model, whatever. And it's not. I've given you shit. I've given you so many things already. But you are the missing final piece of the puzzle. And you don't want to believe me because it's painful. I'm going to constantly remind you. Every time I talk on the Twitter space, I'm reminding you sometimes gently. But in this one, it probably hurts a little bit. It probably feels off-putting. Don't hate the don't hate the messenger. Okay, I'm I'm Doctor ICT. Okay, I'm telling you this is the medicine that you need. It doesn't taste good, but it helps you. It makes you better, and it's important for you to grow and understand how to do this correctly and not hurt yourself. That's why I teach in a demo. Because if I teach in a demo, and I go out there and I show you what I'm doing, because the misnomer is this. If I'm the number one guru on Twitter, right, Patrick, um, and I'm trading with a demo, I don't trade with live money, I'm already loaded. I don't need to prove people I have made money in the marketplace. I don't need to do that. I'm calling it. My students are making money. The stuff happens. That's all that needs to be known. That's the only thing I promise, that you're going to learn how to read price action. I did not promise you profitability. That's something that you individually, you individually control. But if I have, if I'm out here in public, in in the mode of an educator, and I have no emotional commitment that holds me back about using a demo, then you should have no problem practicing in one. If your mentor is operating and teaching through the medium of a of a demo, I don't listen to these jokers out there that have something to sell. Oh, wow, he does this and he does that, and they're not even doing anything close to what we do. Their whole month, I can do that in one fucking day. One day. From beginning to end, show you the whole fucking history. Done. I don't need to do that. I don't have a little dick complex, okay? I'm completely content with who I am, how I am, and my own length. I don't need to worry about anything else. So when you're looking at this, don't view what you're doing as a demo is not significant enough because it is significant because you're reading price the same price action that's unfolding in that demo is happening for people that are trading in real money the real money people that did everything opposite to what you're doing are expecting in price action and lost their ass believe me they know for fucking certain that that shit just happened to them i'm teaching you so that way you have no emotional connection to this you have no connection to it emotionally so you can't be swayed in the periods where it will do its damage. You can't get all you know, egotistical because you're not, you're not making any money. You're not getting taxed. You, you can't go out and spend those demo dollars, but you're getting that experience and you're allowing yourself to learn what I'm teaching you. When you get it right, pause. Feel what it feels like to get it right. Give your journal time between entries where you executed and your next trade. I'm not convincing you or I'm trying to talk to you into taking trade after trade after trade after trade to fill your journal up. That's not what this is all about. It's quality over quantity. And just because I'm teaching you the skill set through the medium of day trading, it's not every day trading. There's recklessness out there and people gravitate to wild cowboy type shit. And I've done that stuff, and I, I fell victim to it when I was coming up. I saw people doing some crazy stuff on America Online. I was like, well, I want to do that too. And I got hurt. And I, I tried to force myself to learn what it is they're doing, and I couldn't do it. So I just stopped. If I'm not able to bridge the gap for you, I'm not the best mentor. Okay, I've said this many times before. I'm not the best mentor. I'm sure 
in years to come, someone's going to properly learn what I'm teaching and they're going to do a better job of coaching other people. Okay. Until I'm done, that can't happen. But November, we're done. I may not be able to fulfill that need that one of you or individually, some of you that are listening, I might not be the person that can deliver it. It might be one of my children later in, in life that, if they decided to go that route. I don't know. I'm doing the best I can. I have limitations as a person. I have things I wrestle with and I'm a real person. So I'm practical. I know that I'm not going to reach all of you. And it hurts me because I try very hard, very, very hard to try to do whatever I can to allow you to understand what it is that you need to know and to eliminate the things you're worrying about. And it frustrates me when I see people not listening to the sound advice that I wish I would have, I would have paid whatever I had to learn how I'm teaching you. Like I'm trying to be because I know what it was like. I lived it. I mean, I, I know 20-year-old Michael. I, I mean, I'm that guy. And if I would have had this, it would have done so much for me. It would have encouraged me when I needed it. It would have kept me aligned properly. And it would have allowed me to control myself when I didn't have any control. When I would win, I'd want to go back in right away. When I lost, I'd want to go right back in. Like, I, I was not fearful. Once I learned certain methods of getting in, you know, I was looking for it all the time. Not understanding that the market's going to have an ebb and flow. There's a time delivery to all this shit. And unless you understand that, just the liquidity alone is not enough. It's essential, but it's not enough. You have to know how, how they use time. And that takes time to teach, which is why I tell everyone a you know, minimum is a year. And that's just really scratching the surface. Your best learning is going to be in your year two through four. But you can be profitable all through that. So don't let that be a deterrent. Don't let it be like, oh, I'm not, you're saying I can't make money. No, you can fucking make money just watching the YouTube uh, playlist from 2022. If you have a general foundation of understanding what price action usually does, you're, if, if you're familiar with trading and you go into that model, you can go right out the gate, boom, and start finding profitability. I'm convinced of that. But the problem is, is I have a lot of people that come to me that are greenhorns. They're brand new. They're just right out of the, the womb okay here make me a trader I, I don't know how to walk yet but make me a trader so it's it's only comes in in the impossibility for some of you to learn from me because i'm not the i'm not the beginning step and and that's like i've wrestled over the weekend with, do i even want to waste time with creating like a baby step ICT version, like, okay, the basics of the basics. I just don't have the patience for that shit. Like, I don't, I don't have the patience for it. And, and throughout the years I've thought about doing, I thought about doing it. I just don't have it in me to do it. Like, I don't have it in me to do that. So I'm not the beginning step. Like it's, it's actually better for you to try to get out there and mess up, learn from doing something stupid, some other kind of approach. And then, that way you have some experience to measure it against. So that way you can see, oh yeah, I would have placed my stop loss there or I would have saw the market going lower or higher there. Like I was admitting to you when I was 20 something years old and I thought the Swiss franc was gonna go up because I thought the weekly chart had a bullish um, bull flag. When all it was doing was setting up a model that I teach now today as a mega trade. And I couldn't I couldn't see it. My infancy as, as a trader you know, hid it from me. I didn't have the understanding. I didn't, didn't have the experience, but I saw a pattern. And because I was looking for longs only, you know, you're going to look what you're, you're going to find what you're looking for. If you look hard enough, you know, if you torture the data and the numbers enough, they'll, they'll submit and admit to anything you want it to do. And that's the problem with this. That's why indicators look wonderful because given enough time and sample set and, and any indicator, can be made to show profitability. But when you walk forward with it, does it really work? So I'm teaching you elements of time, price delivery, algorithmic price delivery, macros, things that generalize uh, delivery and price. When should they form? How do they form? What does it look like? Why should it take place? Who's getting hurt from, from that unfolding in price and who stands the gain? That's, that, these are questions that you need to ask yourself. If I was asked to like, present a... That's a good wheelie, man.
this guy's took out there the wheelie. The um <laughs> the uh that really was a good wheelie, by the way. The um you have to ask yourself questions like a checklist, okay? Those are type the type of questions. If if you miss it, just rewind it when it gets on YouTube from somebody else that puts it up on or listen to the recording here. The uh the idea of who who stands the game. Like you have to personify the market with this person okay it's not one person it's a collective entity that i dub is smart money they don't make courses you don't know them you don't know none of their names they're way above george soros okay and they're employed by folks that you aren't going to meet and they're in there taking the other side that's that's a segment of the market that no one's talked about they hinted at something like if there was somebody out there could do this all the time, this puppeteer, composite man. That exists, but not in the scope that it's promoted. If you can personify the market like that, where this unforeseen entity, like you never have an opportunity to meet them, if they're cannibalizing market participants, what you're looking at in price right now, where would they be long? And it's easy to study it real time because you can see where has it, where's the price action move that's unfolding right now? Where did it originate recently? Did it take stops when it started there? Because if it didn't, it's probably un, unfinished and probably needs to go lower. If it has taken stops, then look for inefficiencies or buy stops above the marketplace because that's where it's going to go. Any time frame. That's what I look at when I'm looking at price. I'm not looking at Fibonacci ratios and fucking patterns and like I'm not look that, that's that's the distraction. That's the misdirection. You're looking at the left hand when the right hand's doing the work. They'll paint these uh, these charts, whether it be candlesticks or Heikinashi or whatever the fuck you're looking at, Renko bars, point and figure. You, know, you point at a chart and try to figure out what the fuck it means. All that stuff is distractions. They're all distractions. And if you can find a way to simply say, all right, sure, it sounds Tom Clancy. So it's, 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 it's conspiracy theory to listen to some of the shit I'm saying, but it works. It works because this is the market. And if you look at the performance of other students that are doing really, really well, what are they doing? They're going in with a model that they have simplified using the concepts that I've taught. You only need a reason to be bullish or bearish. I mean, let's just strip it down to the Chrome folks, okay? You're going into the marketplace. All right. What I want to be focusing on this week? Um, I want to be a bull or I want to be bear. So what constitutes some reason for you to feel confident about that? Go to the weekly chart. Is there a reason for it to expand higher? What, what would it need to go up to to go higher on the weekly chart. If it's going to make a case to be going higher on the weekly chart, it stands the reason that you're probably going to get one good bullish day using daily time frame. And if you do it around the time when there's a medium or high impact news driver that just so happens to come out that day during that session, chances are you probably narrowed down your focus to a opportunity in the marketplace. That's not an everyday uh, occasion. And you need to warm up to the idea that I don't need to be in here every day. I can. Me, Inner Circle Trader, ICT, I am the fucking man with this information. This is my shit. But I don't need to be out here every single day. And if I'm the creator of this stuff and I'm not here every day doing it, what makes you feel like you have to live up to that expectation? You've, you've presented this as a challenge to yourself when nobody offered it as a challenge. You did that. You're placing olympic size challenges in front of you with next to no experience and you're starting off on the wrong foot by doing that less is more being content with enough if you're only making a thousand dollars a week that's all you can amount to in the first year or two is that fucking failure to you <laughs> i don't see that i don't see it as failure but if you start measuring yourself up to everybody else 
Well, this guy, he said he made five thousand dollars. Oh, this guy, look, he's got a certificate that says he, you know, he, he got five accounts passed. Oh, this person's got a payout for for twenty thousand dollars. This person's got three thousand dollars paid out. You know, every single day this week. What are you doing? You're minding someone else's business. And if you're minding someone else's business, who is minding yours? No wonder you're getting the results you're looking for. No wonder you're stressing because you're not minding your own fucking business. This is your business. This is your workshop. This is your storefront. This is your incorporation. You incorporated. If you aren't worrying about you and what it is that you're doing or not doing and when to do it, nobody else is going to do it for you. I'm educating you and I can't do it for you. I can't push you into a trade. I can't put you out of a trade. You're doing all that. But you got to get real comfortable in your skin without me. Because warming up to the idea of, okay, ICT tells me to draw. Instead of just listening to where I think it's going to go, go into the charts and explain to yourself in your journal why I said those things. Because I'm giving you all those details. They're there on YouTube. They're in my Twitter spaces. They're in my tweets. I didn't hide it from you. And you have to condition yourself to see those things in old moves. Because it's not. it didn't just work on that one instance. My concepts didn't just start working, you know, because this, this you know, just unfolded just recently. We've been doing this for years. Years and years and years. People watch me do this every single day behind a paywall. Every single day I'm expected to call it. No signal service or not, it still requires understanding and skill. And you're being exposed to it and you need to take advantage of it while I'm here. Because November, you're left with what, of whatever I've taught, that's it. And if you haven't done the work of testing yourself and conditioning yourself throughout this year, looking for what it is I'm teaching at that time and go back and look at old moves and see if those same things don't occur and exist and, and it does. That's that's the epiphany. That's the aha moment. Like, oh, wow, it really is there. These gaps really do exist. And I can go in there and I can trade them every single time when it pre presents the opportunity to do so. And I can do as little as five handles and do well. Yeah. So why are you putting all this expectation on yourself? These mountains of, of goals that nobody realistically could be meeting in the beginning stages of this because you don't even know who you are as a trader. You all have the capability to exceed way beyond your expectations, way, whatever you think is profitable. And this is where you succeed. Like what, what defines that? Can I ask you that and, 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 and reply to this post that this Twitter space has um, been launched from? You can reply to it. What, what is, what is success to you? When, when you get this amount of money, what would you call that as success? Like you, you have met your goal right now. When you first started trading, what was that? It may have changed, but what was it from the beginning? For for those that are brand new, what is that goal? Some of you, it's, it's $100,000. Some of you, it's a million dollars. I can tell you a million dollars is not a lot of money. Like it's not a lot of money. I, I spent literally $3.7 million in the last 11 months. It goes quick. It goes real quick. What used to be a million dollars is nothing now. A million dollars is like the new 50,000. Years ago, it was a lot of money, but it's nothing now. But whatever that is, don't, and don't let me discourage you. If it was a million dollars, say that's what your goal was. Say, okay, if I, if I made a million dollars, that's success. If it's $100,000, don't let me say whatever I said and diminish, like, oh, I, I'm embarrassed to say that because this is a lot of money to me, but it wouldn't be a lot of money. I just, I want to know just for the sake of knowing the listeners expectations of what they view as success. Like what's the mile marker for you that says I I've made money. Because I can tell you there's people all around the world are going to have a, a way, you know, separation between what some may view as success and others not. 